What's up, sweaties? You're watching Collider Heroes. I'm John Schnepp. This is episode 145. That's right. We are in the Friday zone where we're going to talk about some superhero films and which ones we think are the best of the best, the top five superhero films. We're going to mix and match them. This order is probably going to change in literally three months, depending on which one knocks one of these out of the title. You got Thor Ragnarok coming out. You got Justice League. You know who I've got? I've got Robert Meyer Burnett and Amy Dallin. What's up, Robert? Uh, you know, this is a tough question. It's something I ponder usually every morning. So it's going to be interesting to see what you two come up with. That's right. Pondering away. Also, Amy Dallin. This is huge. Y'all know I hate ranking things. This is the hardest thing of all time, but we're going to have fun. Well, you know what? Before we even get into what is the rough top five, and we're going to mix and match them, all of us have different opinions on what is the top five movie. Let's let's name a couple of runners up. Like I'm going to say, within the superhero realm of of comic book movies, you've got a lot of them. But I, I love comic book adaptions, you know, adaptations, so to speak. Like Sin City is one of my top adaptations. I think. Robert Rodriguez and Frank Miller did a great adaptation of Frank Miller's graphic novel series. The very first Sin City, in many ways, is a flawless comic book adaptation. They were able to take the comic book written and drawn from the page and kind of bring it to life in such a visceral and exciting way. Sin City sticks out to me. How about you, Amy? Well, uh, one of my runners up, since I, I just saw the prompt being best superhero movies, one of my runners up would have to be The Incredibles. Totally. Uh, it, it, it stands out from some of the other films because it is explicitly a family-friendly film, but it's got one of the best superhero films of all time. It is the greatest Fantastic Four film ever made. Um, Robert, how about you? I wouldn't call it a superhero film, but I think it's one of the best comic book adaptations ever done, which is Alex Proyas' 1994 The Crow. Totally. Mm -hmm. The first The Crow, I think, I mean, it's maybe not as as just hard hitting or depressing it's it's got much more of a fantasy element to it mm -hmm. but in terms of being evocative and creating its own universe and i love brandon lee's portrayal of eric draven totally. and i love the entire secondary cast and you know michael wincott is the villain and ugh, everything about the crow and the music yeah fantastic score is fantastic if you've never seen the crow it's pretty much on every streaming service right now available check it out love the crow let's get into the, our, our top five there's so many superhero movies that come out every year now. There's eight or nine or 10 every year. So doing a top five, you'd be like, what's your top five of 2017, which we probably will do at the end of this year. Hint, hint, because we got to wait till all the movies come out for 2017. You can't preemptively do one till we see some of these other ones like Thor Ragnarok and Justice League. But guess what? Number five, for me at least, is Avengers. The release date, 2012. One and a half billion dollars at the box office, a 92% at Rotten Tomatoes. It received Academy Award nominations for Best Visual Effects. And guess what? This was the culmination of what the Marvel pro project was, which is when they came out with Iron Man and Hulk in 2008, they were like, let's see if we could slowly build a universe. We just got all these characters back. And bam, those two, two were enough of a success to then make Captain America, First Avenger, and Thor which I never thought in a million years I'd ever see a Thor movie. <laughs> and guess what? Those movies were awesome. And then that led to them saying, guess what? This Avengers initiative that we teased in the first Iron Man is actually happening. And Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury is bringing them all together into this movie that all of us comic nerds know as the Avengers. And everybody else was like, what's this Avengers thing? Bam, you get this movie. What are your guys' thoughts about the Avengers and how would you rank it, Robert? Well, it's definitely up there. I mean, you know, Avengers, sitting in the theater watching Avengers for the first time was one of those, like, revelatory, almost religious conviction moments where I couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, just seeing all those characters come together in a, in a big-budget movie directed with such panache and style, and I, I, it was a childhood fantasy that I never thought I would see and made real, made real. And I would say this. The movie as a film, I don't think, is the greatest film. The first 20 minutes is kind of a little TV. You know, they're in the base, and they're looking at the, the cube, the cosmic cube from Captain America. Eh, that's all right. And then the end, the, the generic villains, I mean, I wish that there was more of, a, of an antagonist. I mean, Loki was great, mm -hmm. but he had these, again, the nameless, faceless drones that sure. were the Chitauri. But other than that... I think the movie is just, every time I watch it, it just puts a huge smile on my face. It just doesn't resonate with me the same way that other movies that I love resonate because it's a little bit more distancing. You're watching it sort of 
as an amusement park ride and a, a joyous one at that. But it doesn't get to the core of my being the way sure. I wanted it to. And I don't know if an Avengers movie could do that, but I still love it. How about you, Amy? Well, this is going to probably, uh, <laughs> jumping right to the end, this is probably my number one. Right on. I love that movie. Uh, I love it partly for the experience of watching it, which was one of the great like theater-going memories of my for life. Us, no doubt. Of seeing the impossible become possible. Like I have a weakness for sort of first attempts and the first person to pull something off. Uh, and I just the the alchemy of it, the the magic, everything you said that like it those memories stay with me so strongly. I love the bad guy of Loki. That I get the criticisms of the Chitari, but that scene's not about the distinctiveness of the bad guys. It's about right. that spinning shot of the Avengers coming together for the first time, right. which is burned into all of our hearts. Uh, it, it's it's really special to me, and it's a proof of concept for everything that was to come, uh, as well as a culmination of the work they had done to that point. Uh, it's probably my top. I, I agree with both of you, and that's <laughs> why, for me, it's number five, because I was in the theater like I was transported back to when I was 12, I, the smile could not leave my face. I loved so much of every moment of that scene by scene by scene, seeing things brought to life from when I was five to my age of, I'm an old man now, uh, seeing like the Hulk fighting Thor on the helicarrier, seeing just, just scenes like Iron Man and Thor and Captain America in the same frame. Those kinds of things, yeah, you could definitely see that, but it wouldn't mean anything if the story didn't matter and you didn't care about all those characters previously. So that's why it was so important for them to set up all these characters standalone before you brought them together so you didn't have to do an origin for any one of them. They already had, their characters were already established and Thor was already dealing with like, man, my brother, this and that. I mean, some of the lines in that movie are so much, so funny. I mean, having Joss Whedon do the Avengers, was a genius pull. Like Dude, a helicarrier. Him write, yeah. You're talking about them fighting on a helicarrier. Yeah. Who ever thought they would see that? And not anyone. So <laughs> I, I think, uh, look, now we've got this, these incredible giant movies like Avengers Infinity War. Obviously, the Russo brothers have taken the mantle of what Joss has built with Avengers and Ultron to the next level. I think with, with their Avengers 2.5, whatever you want to call Captain America Civil War, incredible, fantastic film. But Avengers, to me, is... Uh, like one of the all-time great superhero films, you know, not a standalone superhero film, but I'm kind of mixing them all together. Well, I mean, here's here's the top number four, for me at least, is X2, X-Men United. Now, the release date is 2003, 407 million at the box office. The first cut of the film was rated R. It was recut as a PG-13 film, 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is the X-Men film that was basically the superhero film to beat for many decades. Why? Because it was an incredible story. It had a lot of it stayed true to a lot of the characters, even though they were all wearing black leather. It felt like I was watching an X-Men movie. It had the opening and beginnings of the Dark Phoenix saga. It had so many different amazing characterizations of not only Magneto or Cyclops or Logan, Professor X. I mean, I think so many of the things that, that Singer brought forth in the first X-Men movie that felt a little underdeveloped were fully developed in X-Men 2. And I remembered seeing that movie in the theater at the Man's Chinese and coming outside. And there were about like 30 other nerds who had all been, it was opening night. We all just kind of collected in the front and just were like, wasn't that incredible? And just talked about that movie for probably like 45 minutes, just completely nerding out. I mean, that was that's the kind of thing that you look for when you go see a movie and you see it with a bunch of other nerds. You're like, what'd you think? And if you have that collective experience of having something like X2 deliver on so many fronts, that's what you get. Let's start with you, Amy. What do you think about X2 and where does it fall for you? Oh man, it's definitely in my top five. It, it It's funny because parts of it, like, parts of it have aged more or less well, right. but it's like the the bar for me is this like do i remember seeing this movie i have incredibly vivid movies of uh, vivid memories of sitting in the theater watching x2 and just being amazed that they were bringing this thing that i loved to the world uh so beautifully uh so it, it, like it's it's a sort of the one of the other honorable mentions for me is spider-man 2 i think both totally. that spider-man 2 and x-men 2 were necessary bricks in the path to like the golden age that we have right now. Right. Um, but for me, X2 probably edges it out because it's so personally important to me. Definitely. Robert, how about you? 
Well, you know, I, I, I worked on, on that doing the, 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 the DVD special features, and I actually had a copy of that movie months before it opened in theaters. And I, I remember when I first got it, the thing that struck me the most was the opening Nightcrawler assassination attempt on the president. Mm -hmm. To hear the word BAMF sound in real life, like what a BAMF sounds like, right. and to watch that happen was so right. Like, I couldn't believe that even though my buddy had made this movie, when I finally saw it, and I, I'm like, again, you're sitting there going, I've, I've seen this my whole life. I've read this word Banff, and now I know what it sounds like for real. You've got Nightcrawler when he, when he rescues Rogue in midair out of the, the X-Jet, and then Lady Deathstrike, you know, in Stryker's base. I, everything about it, again, it was one of those things where I'm like, I can't believe I'm, I'm seeing this. You know, and all these characters, again, it was all about the characters. You love those actors. They all inhabited those roles, and it was just... It was adult, you, you felt it. it, it was taking, I mean, now it's par for the course, but back then, X-Men was almost like a one-off fluke. There was right. X-Men and Spider-Man, we did not know how these would develop, right. but to see X-Men 2 just be so much grander and, and bring in more characters, and it was just, a, a one, again, a wonderful time at the movies, and I just would, I would watch that movie in the edit bay. No one could see it, no one could know I had the movie. Right. I'm just watching it over and over and over again. I, I, it was amazing. Sometimes it's a horrible thing to have secrets. Other times, it's amazing. So <laughs> that's a, that's the number two one. Number three, Superman the movie. The release date, 1978. At the time, it was the most expensive movie ever made at $55 million. Uh, took in $300 million at the box office. Robert Redford and Burt Reynolds were offered the role of Superman. 93% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Superman the movie, uh, to me, uh, it holds up as an incredible way to adopt, or sorry, to adapt a fantastical character. So you basically, the movie's broken into three sections. You have Krypton, you have Smallville, and then you have Metropolis, and you have the growth of this character from the horrible beginning of his life, or the death of all of his family and everything, to him growing up as a kid with these weird powers, to then taking on the mantle place of someone who can protect the Earth. Uh, be a, basically a superhero. And remember, this is 1978, so many, many years ago. It's almost 40 years old. Uh, that you can watch this film. Sure, there's some jokes that are dated and a few things are a little slow, but you could watch this movie right now and come away feeling so good about not only the character Superman, Clark Kent, but it's actually a really well-made film. So it takes its time to tell the story. I feel like Superman the movie holds up Compared to so many other films, that's why it's in the top five. I love Tim Burton's Batman and Batman Returns. Those are all in my top 20, top 10 kind of films. But Superman the movie stands out as far as a superhero film. It has to be in the top five for me at least. What are your thoughts, Robert, on Superman the movie? Well, again, I mean, remember we were at the time when I saw the movie, I was 11. And I had the Super Friends on TV. I had the Batman live action television series. I don't think Spider-Man was on the air. Spider-Man was on the electric company. Right. And the mythic nature, a year after Star Wars had come out, and the portrayal of Krypton as a truly alien world with that crystalline technology and everything that, that it, it was the feel of it. When you sat in that theater as a kid, having read comic books, I never thought it was possible to see that imagery writ large on the big screen as it was in Superman. John Williams, you thought he couldn't do any better than that Star Wars theme, right. the Superman theme. Oh my God, with those credits blasting in front of you and. It was just incredible, and it was so mythic. You know, Glenn Ford saying, I knew you're here for a reason. You know, all that stuff. As a kid, you, you, again, it was like a religious epiphany. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're feeling the holy word of, of Krypton and what Superman really, really was. And the, even the poster with the Superman insignia in, in clouds, and it just said, you'll believe a man can fly. Yes, I did. And it was, it was really a life-changing moment. I mean, it was one of those times when cinema had such an impact back then. Now it's all par for the course. We just expect it. Right. But back then, it was a transcendent moment in my young life. Amy? Uh, I feel the same way, especially if we are leaning towards, and I tend to, like the first examples, the ones who sort of proved it can be done, you can't have that conversation and not include Superman the movie. Well, Superman the movie stays true. So does Captain America Civil War, which is my number two film. Release date, 2016. That's right, just last year. Box office, one in $1.13 billion. Seventh most expensive film ever made. 90% Rotten Tomatoes. The final standalone Cap movie with Chris Evans' contract, at least. Though he's publicly stated he's probably going to do more of them. 
You got Infinity War its sequel. He's doing those. Who knows how many more Cap films Chris Evans is going to do. But boy, was he and is he the greatest Captain America to ever be uh, Captain America? Steve Rogers. We had a couple of added, you know, versions of him. I think in the like late 70s, Red Brown did a couple of TV sh versions of Captain America. And then there was uh, the 1991 Captain America film that, uh, you know, Salinger is in and it's got like an, an Italian red skull. It's very strange. Check it out and then forget about it because <laughs> Captain America, the first Avenger is where it all started. You had the Winter Soldier, which was an incredible film. And then that was followed up with by the Russo brothers doing Winter Soldier and then doing Civil War uh, with basically what you know we like to refer to as Avengers 2.5 because technically that's what it was, but it was all told from Cap's perspective. I think it's an incredible masterpiece. I mean, we can go on for hours dissecting the airport sequence, that 17-minute rip from a comic book, splash page after splash page. But the movie itself, I think just the way they introduce Black Panther, the way the storytelling is done is to me masterful because they're able to get all of these different characters and their storylines in the movie and you're able to follow plot A and plot B and ripping through all of it is plot C, which is the vengeance of the Black Panther. So it's such a strong way to introduce this character to T'Challa to set him up for his own film, which is coming up, but it never felt intrusive and it also never felt like it was taking away from Cap or Steve's story. So to me, I think it's one of the greatest ways to tell a superhero film by introducing all these other characters and having all these other characters all have already been as a supporting cast. That's why it's still Captain America to me. It's not Avengers Civil War. I think it's an incredible film. Amy, what are your thoughts? I love this movie very much. Uh, I'm not sure if I would have, if it would have made my top five because when I think about the Captain America movies, I love all three of them in very different ways. Uh, and I like, this is an incredible movie. Winter Soldier was an incredible movie, especially in terms of being kind of tight and self-contained. And I have a huge soft spot for First Avengers mm -hmm. because I like, I love them all so much. I, it's less obvious to me than it's sort of like, well, Superman the movie has to be on the list. And I, that might not be fair because I think probably in some ways, all three of the Captain America movies are higher quality than the superhero right. Superman movie. But like, it, it's I don't. It's tough for me to make a call on this one, and I have I, I have one more runner up that might take this spot for me. Okay. But, uh, How about you, Robert? Well, I think in terms of of a comic book adaptation, the same joy that we get reading comic books from the time I was a child to even today when I read superhero comics, whatever that ineffable thing is that touches my soul and, and makes me feel giddy is all throughout Captain America Civil War. I mean, everything about, whether it's Ed Brubaker's entire run, reading all that in one afternoon, that movie has so much goodness in it. From the time you've got Scarlet Witch being bummed out about what happened, you know, in Africa through that whole, there's so much going on in that film. And then you do get the airport scene, and, and I really like the villain's motivation, even though everyone's like, oh, you're not, people don't like these Marvel villains because they're not giant, larger-than-life supervillains that are fighting in the skies of the mm. cities. They're, they're different kinds of villains. But this film had so much going on in it. I really feel it did justice to, to the comic book medium. I and agree. all the characters. I think the the villain Zemo was done masterfully because he wasn't like a guy with a weird, you know, washcloth over his face. I shall rule the world. It was actually like getting revenge for the murder of his family. And guess what? He happened to also be a masterful assassin. But his family was murdered. He's going to take out the people he blames for murdering them and put them against them, each other. I think it was great. And to see that, that also, once again, was the hero arc for T'Challa, where he, I'm not going to kill you. You know, it's like, oh, it's, it's, such just, a good... it, it's, it's, it's true. It's masterful storytelling. So yeah. it's like, it, does, it doesn't go the simple route of like, we need a really good supervillain. It's like, it's actually incredibly intelligent and asking more from the audience. So it actually asks more from you which some, some people find challenging. They just want easy stuff. But uh, for that's why for myself, I found not only was it a challenging, also big budget superhero film, it made a lot of sense to me, the way, they, the way everything was put together. So that's why it's number two for me. Number one, The Dark Knight. Release date 2008, made over a billion dollars, certified 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. The late Heath Ledger won over 20 awards, including a post, uh, posthumous uh, act, uh, Oscar. So uh, let's talk about The Dark Knight. I mean, you know, obviously there's been a lot of Batman films, starting with, you know, the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton Batman film, all the different derivations they're in. And then we got to the Bale Batman. Now we have the new, uh, you know, the uh, Ben Affleck Batman with Snyder. Um, but The Dark Knight, to me, uh, why it's number one is because it truly 
uh, Christian Bale was is I think one of the the better Batmans, but Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan's take on the Batman to me really was quite smart. Beginning with Batman Begins, taking little adaptation cues from the world of comic books like Frank Miller's Year One and a whole bunch of different things and sewing it together. But where it really came through was the crime world of Gotham City in The Dark Knight. So I felt like the crime world of Gotham City in Batman Begins was a little like a little cartoony or whatever you want to call it. Like it was like, but it made sense. But the way they kind of retrofitted it and had these crime bosses really made a lot more sense to me where it's like people would be money laundering. People would be more concerned about, you know, you know, how's oh, the Batman here? And then you have the crackpot, the Joker, who's like, you know, he's chaos and he's coming in and he's like, you know, he's not afraid to confront the mob bosses and say, we've got to join together and I'm the only one who could do this. It was so much fun to see all these crazy bigger than life characters thrown into what is technically a procedural. So to me, uh, done masterfully as well, done cinematically, done just the way I've always never thought I'd see the Joker, but then to see that brought to life with all the different crazy versions that we've read from you know Arkham Asylum, The Dark Knight Returns, all these different versions of the Joker were kind of melded together by Heath Ledger and Christopher uh, Christopher Nolan. So that's that's to me why it's such a strong film. You could watch it and it resonates. And I feel like that to me at least is the best Batman film ever made and really kind of falls into one of my favorite superhero films. So how about you, Amy? What do you think about The Dark Knight? Uh, it's absolutely on my top five. Uh, it You want to talk about theater going experiences the summer of 2008, like coming off of Iron Man and into The Dark Knight, I just thought that we had entered a new crazy world mm -hmm. uh, of, of wonderful storytelling. Uh, it for, I mean, it's sort of enough to say like that this movie got and earned a, an acting Oscar. Uh, it made it proved that you can tell stories of that quality and that emotional depth and that richness in the superhero world, which we all knew as comic book fans, uh, but the rest of the world had not yet been persuaded of. Uh, so, I, yeah, I have really fond memories of this film. How about you, Robert? Well, I think everything you said is absolutely true, but one of the more important elements about this film is it transcends its comic book origins. I mean, the film is such a zeitgeist moment in terms of cinema you've got a character in our post 9 11 world and in 2008 the financial meltdown happened and while this started out being like a police procedural the way that nolan was so influenced by michael mann's heat uh it takes these fantastical elements of the batman mythology and and the joker becomes this like you said chaotic force that really was what life was like back then i mean you never knew when the financial the 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 malfeasance that was happening all throughout our culture, people, the institutions that we believed in were betraying us. Mm -hmm. And all, that was all uh, embodied in what the Joker had to do. And that where was the good in our cities? Everything was corrupt. The underpinnings are, of our entire culture were rotting from the bottom up. And, and, and at any one moment, you're gonna lose your house. You're gonna lose everything that you have. And th this film, any if you don't buy into the Avengers world, which I can, see people don't i mean there's a lot of people that just comic book movies they won't go see them you can watch a movie like the dark knight and it resonates on so many other different levels and i i think it probably like you said probably would be the number one comic book adaptation in the sense that it appeals to all moviegoers and mm -hmm. there's something i mean i'm sure you're somebody who's studying semiotics as a grad student as a phd student in, in the highest levels of university that wouldn't that would never pick up a comic can still go to this film and find something relevant and valuable in it yeah, I'm glad you said that. I mean, I feel like there's so many bigger storylines that are in there that kind of appeal to everyone, as well as like, you know, how long can you be the hero until you become the villain? And just the, the story arc of just Two-Faced, things that they fit in there and they forced these decisions to be made, not just by the hero, but also by the villain. So I think Dark Knight is one of the most fantastic superhero films. Why don't you write in and let us know what your top five superhero films my, are? Can I? I'm sneaking in my 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 backup. By all means, which please do. Is that uh, I? The, part of the reason I'm reluctant to put Civil War in is because it's relatively new, and I try to like give it a little time before I put things in the top five. Sure. And that's the only reason that I didn't come in here and just shout Wonder Woman. Like we'll we'll see in a couple of years where yes. it lands for me. But like, if you want to talk movie going experiences and things I had never seen done and things that moved and like moved and affected me as a moviegoer. Like, is it a perfect movie? No, but is it in my top five? 
I'm going to say probably. Like, I don't want to, I'm not putting it there yet because I just saw it like right. a month ago. Uh, and it's the same reason, like, I'll revisit Wonder Woman and Civil War and see who gets that spot in like five, ten years. I agree. That's why Wonder Woman is not in the top five. And I can't really even put it in my top ten yet because it just literally came out like three or four months ago. And I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. It definitely had the echoes of Superman the movie to me. The, the building of the, you know, where she came from. Where did he come from? Then now we're in the real world. We're seeing we're seeing the adventures of the first adventures of Wonder Woman, and then we're going to move into you know what we see later, which is Batman v Superman and now Just League. So I feel like the start is there, and it's a great film. But I want to. It's got to age a little bit for me to even be able to you know stack it up with all these other films that I've seen multiple times. Robert, how about you? Did you have another uh, number one for yourself? No, I mean I really didn't. But I would I would you know I would encourage people that when you go back and you watch Superman the movie. Remember, it was made 40 years ago, <laughs> and don't allow the flying scenes, Zorn Prezig's the Zoptic process, right, right. to put you off. Try and put your, your mind in the mindset of the year the film was made. Don't be comparing it to General Zod beating up the new Superman in Man of Steel. You know, you have to try and, and, and put yourself in the mindset of what it was like to watch that movie when it first came out. Yeah. Because that no one had ever seen anything like that before, and now people watch it, the tone of things are different, and... It's not as realistic, and I, I try and encourage everyone to watch movies when they go back and look at films when they were first made. You can enjoy them more if you don't expect the films of today to be what you're watching when you watch a film that's 30, 40, 50, or 60 years old. Yeah, I think that can be said for most films. You have to put on this, these different lenses, like chill, relax. A lot of things weren't edited so fast as they are now, so just got to... Be ready to enjoy that film. Let me thank my guests. Robert, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. <laughs> find me on Instagram at RM Burnett. Or find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And please keep those Russian hotbot messages coming because they crack me up. <laughs> Amy, how about you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at EnthusiAmy. And you can find me uh, just uh, at Twitter and Instagram at John Schnepp. You've been watching episode 145 of Collider Heroes Friday edition. Thanks for being here all week with us. We'll see you next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.